Hey, hey, hey everyone, how's it going? It's Dan here from Prompt Hub again. Today we are going to be looking at a really specific type of prompt engineering method called few shot prompting. This is, I think, one of the more popular and one of the more well known um, methods. We're going to go super deep on it, all the details, get you everything you need, including a bunch of templates and resources as well. So, what exactly is few shot prompting? Basically, it's when you send examples along in your prompt to help guide or train the model on what you want your output to look like, sound like, uh, the shape of it. It's basically kind of like in training the prompt. So, so it's also called in context learning. Looking at an example here. So this is a single prompt. We are basically writing a prompt to classify the sentiment of a movie review. So we're showing the model an example of a positive a negative, another positive, and then we're leaving the last one to be classified by the model, and it will fill in the blank there. And so we're showing the model a few examples of what we would deem as positive or negative, but also we're showing the model that we want the outputs to be one word and start with a capital letter. So compared to zero shot prompt, um, just a zero shot prompt would just be when you send the prompt, no examples, kind of just vanilla versus having examples. And so we'll take a quick look at a few different ways you can use few shot, few shot prompting. The first one is content creation. This is a really great use case. Um, you'll, I find, and I think a lot of people find when you use LLMs to create content, it sounds very much like AI. The word choice, the style, uh, it's hard to kind of get it to match it on your own. Um, but with few shot prompting, you can kind of get it to sound more human-like and more in your tone or style. So, Let's say we were like a digital marketing agency and we wanted to write a few shot prompt that could be used to create content based on briefs for any client. So here's what that might look like. Like running through this example, we're basically saying, hey, your job is to create content for whatever client. Here's some info about the client. And then here's a couple of examples, briefs and pieces of content. So a brief would basically just be a description of what the content should be and then the content that was created. So these are historical. So these are being pulled from our you know, previous work with this client. And so we know that this was content that was approved or that performed well or whatever the criteria might be. And then we say, here's the last piece of, here's the brief to create content about. And then we'll fill in the blank in the same way that we kind of set it up for that movie sentiment um, analyzer. You see, we also have some delimiters in here to help break up the sections of the prompt. That's another just like best practice. But what's great about this is that we can reuse this. Um, once you get these examples in place um, for a specific client, you can use those kind of over and over again since we know these are good examples. Um, you could even turn this into a little like mini application using a prompt hub form or some other, you know, if you want to build it yourself, which you could then basically take this prompt, put it onto a URL, and now people can just, your team can just drop in the description for whatever the new brief or new piece of content that needs to be made. And then the prompt up form will run that prompt and give you an output. So as I said, once you have those examples in place, you do that little bit of work and you format it and everything's good to go. You can use this for any other piece of content for that specific client. And so let's look at a quick example of zero shot versus few shot in regard to code generation. So we'll do like a pretty simple one and we're just having um, uh, OpenAI GPT 3.5 um, write a Python function to calculate the factorial of a number. So that would be the zero shot prompt. Here is the more kind of built out few shot prompt where we send, you know, same instructions, but then we have a few examples of other Python's functions that we've either created or Catch at GBT create as well. And, you know, we'll look at the outputs here really quickly. We have our kind of summary of the differences at the end, which we'll kind of jump to. The main one being the zero shot prompt output produced you know, a good function, but it didn't add any input validation for negative numbers, which you would need for a factorial function. Um, and the few shot prompt did. It added input checks, it used like an iterative approach for doctrine, for clarity, um, it had better like comments, I would say, that kind of mimicked the example sent. And so overall it was more accurate, more maintainable, um, and things along those lines. And I, th I touched on something that I think is an important note, is that you can actually use um, 
LLMs to create the examples. You wouldn't want to in that first use case with the content generation because you want ones that relate to your specific client. But if I just need some other like Python functions that look good and I, I want to include those in my examples, you can use um, an LLM for that. The other way to do few shot prompting is to actually use different messages. So we've all just kind of been looking, these past examples have been one prompt when we're stuffing the examples in there. Um, but you can break it up to be multiple messages if you have access to you know, a tool like Prompt Hub with our chat testing feature, or you know, if you are making the API request yourself and writing it in code, you can break up, for example, the user and the assistant message. So coming back to that movie sentiment uh, task, it was all in one prompt and now we're breaking it from user, it's assistant, and then we have a user and then the assistant will reply and the assistant being um, just the AI. So splitting it up can help the model get a better understanding of who, which response relates to what and it can provide more clarity. So in terms of which method is better, really depends um, as with all, the, all of this stuff um, and there's trade-offs with each. But if you're you know, doing like chat based stuff, uh, chatbot based stuff and simulating an interaction that might be a good use case for multiple messages. If you're building up, um, you know, if there's like contextual continuity, then that would be a good one, a good use case when you're building things up over time. Um, or if you're running into content, a context window issues, that could be a good use case to break it up and do multiple messages as well. For, sing for in terms of when you'd want to use a single prompt, if it's just, hey, if it's an easy, straightforward task, like that movie sentiment one that we first looked at, I would say that's like a pretty good use case for a single prompt. Um, and it really comes down to, do you have a tool or the time to break it up into different messages? But again, I would say testing and experimenting is kind of number one here. Um, and the, our new chat testing features allow you to do this where you can send just like a single prompt versus a string of multiple prompts as well and be able to kind of push outputs to both of those and test them side by side. So a couple of FAQs that we usually get when working with teams, how many examples to include? We know we were working with a team once who said they wanted to stuff like 20 examples in there to cover all the different bases and use cases. And you know, you could do that. But what, we, what we've seen in practice and from all of the research um, that went into creating this and just over time is that the you get diminishing returns at some point. You get really big lift after one to two, to even to three um, examples. And then after that, it really flattens out and you're probably just burning more tokens um, at that point and not really getting much more um, value out of it. As you can see from both of these um, pulled from papers here, you see, again, a plateau after, I mean, really after five um, in here as well. This is the number of examples. And again, you see three was the best here, five was the best here. So I'd say anywhere from two to five is good and you get really big gains after the second one. Here's one more example as well. You could even see here it starts to um, not only flatline, but get worse. And we've seen this in other use cases as well. Um, so I really would, we always recommend people to not really go beyond eight. So does the order of the examples matter? Um, again, this is all very model specific as we touched on a recent um, post of ours. Each model has really specific requirements for prompts and how it handles prompts and handles inputs and outputs. But it does, it varies. Um, one strategy is to, if you have like a really good example or the best example, um, for example, thinking about the content generation prompt, um, you could have that come last just because the models are, are known to put a little bit of extra emphasis or bias to the, the last um, text that they read. And this is from a paper, it's from a while ago. Um, so this could certainly change now, but basically they had a set of examples and they varied the ordering and you could see how different the accuracy was across the different uh, variations. And again, this was for an older model and this is almost like a year and a half old at this point, which is almost like a decade in our time in, in AI. So again, it's something worth testing out. Um, okay, instructions or examples, what should come first? Um, instructions should come last if the model is having a hard time remembering what to do. So if you throw so, so many examples at it that it, it gets caught up with what's an example versus the instruction, I would have the instruction last for the same reason that we just talked about in terms of recency bias. It will remember the last part a little bit more. If it's a very straightforward task, um, 
then you could have the instructions come and then the examples um, or if the examples are like really specific again have those come last and sometimes you won't even need the instructions um, if the examples guide the model and showed what to do like how would they did for the movie sentiment analyzer so when to use true shot prompting luckily you can kind of use it in any situation um, you'll probably get better outputs but especially if you know you have a very technical domain you don't have enough data to do any fine tuning that would be a good one we see really good use cases for content generation to match tone as we talked about and then output requirements I think is a really big one too so if you need your output to be a certain shape or size or length um, that's going to be a really good use case for a uh, few shot prompting current limitations overfitting is definitely a worry um, the model might mimic an example more strongly than you would like so that's why you do want to have a couple and have them be a diverse set um, you know, garbage in, garbage out, that's always going to be a worry. And if you send bad examples, you're going to get bad outputs. Uh, majority label bias, basically, this is probably not as big of a worry with the new smarter models, but the model may favor answers that are more frequent in your examples. So in our, thinking back to our movie sentiment analyzer, if you're sending more positive examples, it might have a slight skew to saying um, a piece of feedback is positive. And then recency bias, as we've touched on, and that is it for today. It's a little bit longer, um, but this is really, on a, as I mentioned before, the biggest bang for your buck prompt engineering method that we've seen in our, you know, over a year plus covering all this stuff. So a bunch of resources below um, and thanks for following along.